um, there is Real Asset Service Act. It is a law that is strictly implemented, provided for the real asset service professionals, as well as, of course, for the protection of the public. So, ngayon, um, for you to deal um, or offer or sell real asset properties, you uh, one should have that license from PRC. Licenses can be verified through the websites of um, PRC, the Professional Regulation Commission. And if um, you're dealing with a registered and accredited salesperson, so dapat kung hindi siya licensed broker, uh, sa salesperson dapat may accreditation yun. You can verify that uh, salesperson's accreditation through the SUDS website. Many sellers, owners, and buyers are victimized because of small scams, frauds, and unethical practices. If you're under a company and you're offering or are dealing real asset properties, it's already a requirement for the company or for the developer to hire licensed brokers. And then these licensed brokers, if they have a team, a sales team, their salespeople should also be registered. Good afternoon for those who are tuning in for Pro's Talk. Today we have a great guest, but before we get into that, for those that are new to Pro's Talk, we just wanted to explain what it is that we do here and you know how this is related to construction in the Philippines. So Pro's Talk Paul Friends is a the social corporate responsibility of Buildy. Buildy Po is a platform for everyone that wants to have a building project, whether it's for your personal use as your home, or if you are actually for you know building a building for business, this is your one-stop shop to provide you with all the information that you need so that your construction project will be less hassle. Okay, so with that, let me introduce our guest, uh, Ms. Lee Ramirez. Welcome to Pro's Talk, Lee. Hello. Thank you so much for having me here. All right. So very briefly, I'll give you an opportunity to just really introduce yourself. Lee. But for those who are watching us, Pro's Talk Po is a venue where we interview professionals. And again, I just want to reiterate po, no? kaya po Pro's Talk ang pangalan, professionals, because there are a lot of people that, have you know have bad intentions and pro stock po is a venue where we you can really uh we validate the professionals so that when you do engage with them they are really licensed professionals that can give you genuine authentic advice and with that lee can you quickly just introduce yourself to our guests all right um, my name is um, lee ramirez i am a real estate broker focused in but not limited to Quezon City properties that are for sale and for lease. I am engaged in matching people and property all over the Philippines. I am also a licensed real estate consultant. I give professional advice and uh, feasibility project feasibility studies on real estate developments, business, and transactions. I grew up in the areas of Project 6, Visayas Avenue, Sandville Subdivision, and Fill Up Homes. So I am familiar with the heart of Quezon City. That is fantastic. Okay. So, Lee, can you share a little bit more about, you know, just, just as a real estate broker, you know, how long have you been doing this? What are your typical licenses that, you know, people should, you know, parang masanay sila na, Pag walang ganong license, baka kailangan nyo muna mag-isip ng konti. <laughs> Tama yung kausap nyo. Yes, yes. Well, um, I passed the exam, the examination for real estate brokers in 1992. Pero I did not um, practice right away. So it was already 2008. That's 16 years after I obtained my real estate broker's license when I chose to be an active member of the oldest and the largest real estate organization here in the country, the Philippine Association of Real Estate Boards, when I started my career as a real estate broker. 
So I have been in real estate service practice for 14 years now. Uh, so ngayon, um, um, there is Real Estate Service Act. It is a law that is strictly implemented, provided for the real estate service professionals, as well as, of course, for the protection of the public. So ngayon, um, for you to deal um, or offer or sell real estate properties, you uh, one should have that license from PRC. All right. So I think, Lino, that's very important. Thank you for patiently walking us through that. Because for those who are watching, no, you know, people will always come with some have good intentions, some not so good intentions. So important mm -hmm. sa atin na mag avail ng services to just have the basic knowledge of what you need to check for. So meron pong license ito, kailangan po ng broker pumasa. Yes. Yes. Mm -mm. Yeah, and then Lee, they can check that with PRC, right? Kung valid pa yung license na yan. Yes, um, the licenses can be verified through the websites of um, PRC, yung Professional Regulation Commission. And if um, you're dealing with a registered and accredited salesperson, so dapat kung hindi siya licensed broker, uh, sa salesperson dapat may accreditation din yun. You can verify that uh, salesperson's accreditation through the SUDS website naman. Fantastic. This is also important. Kailangan accredited and registered yung salesperson. Correct. All right. Thank you talaga, Lino. Kasi I think some of our, our countrymen no, in the Philippines, minsan usap-usap lang, recommendation, recommendation, hindi po natitignan ng mabuti. And again, the real risk to not talking to professionals to, to to our audience no would be number one probably hindi naman illegal but kulang and ang impact po sa inyo is your hard earned money whether down payment po yan or kung ano man yan pwede pong masayang pati oras correct it's very important yes you know we have to protect our your hard earned money so one must deal only with licensed real estate brokers or again, as I mentioned, registered and accredited salesperson. You see, with the proliferation of real estate scammers, war rooms, we call them color rooms, and illegal mm -hmm. practitioners, um, so many sellers, owners, and buyers are victimized because of small scams, frauds, and unethical practices. And for those naman buying projects from developers, we have to make sure that um, these developers, they already have the license to sell. Correct. Kasi po, no, again, for, the pe for people who are watching, hindi po tayo, and let's forget about the notion na, ay, may license or professional, ay, mahal. Okay, there is a reason po why they're called professionals because again, as Miss Lee explained, no, kailangan po nilang pumasa ng test. Kaya po isinabatas, no? Wow, ang lalim ng Tagalog ko. Sinabatas yung ating kasi malaki pong pera ang involved dito, no? Ang down payment po sa real estate eh, you know, medyo medyo masakit. Pagka yeah. mali or hindi mo na marerecover or scam pala, worst of all, right? Yes. Wala ka na talaga makukuha. If you're scam, mas malaki ang mawawala sa iyo. Correct. All right. So, Lee, can you tell us no, yung difference between uh, your experience as a freelance broker and you under a company broker? Ano bang difference niyan? Okay. Um, I never experienced working as a real estate broker in a company. But all I can say is that because I am not under a company, I work for myself rather than be than work for someone else, such as for a company. I do not have a boss as I am not employed. As a freelancer, I can take on a contract for a company or companies, different clients, as many as I can manage. But ultimately, I am self-employed. Um, I am responsible for every um thing for transaction, for sale, for purchase, for rent, or for loan. I do not have a salary nor an allowance as opposed to the ones 
under a company, which means to, which means to say that um, I pay for my own expenses and I cannot do reimbursements for client call expenses. My time is more flexible as I do not have to report to an office or submit reports. I do not have a quota, so less of pressure. And I get to choose property listings on which ones to handle, to market, and to prioritize. Finally, as a freelancer, I can only depend on myself. No one will do a particular task for me. And even if I pay a liaison to conveniently process documentation, at the end of the day, I'm still responsible for um, every little detail of the transaction. All right, thank you, Lee. So I think for those who are watching now, the important thing po, and this is my takeaway from what you've shared, Lee, is regardless of whether it's a company you're transacting with or a freelance broker, ang importante po yung lisensya ng tao yes. magpa-process ng transaction ninyo if you are interested to purchase a property. Tama ba, Lee? Tama yan, because if you're under a company and you're offering or are dealing real estate properties, it's already a requirement for the company or for the developer to hire licensed brokers. And then these licensed brokers, if they have a team, a sales team, their salespeople should also be registered under this Right. Mm -hmm. And Lee, from your experience, um, do you part, do you have anything in particular that must fast moving in terms of real estate versus condominiums or townhouse or houses? But what 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 was your experience? Um, I have never experienced project selling. I'm into brokerage, meaning um, specifically townhouses, houses and lots, lots. Your project selling kasi, you are under a developer. There's a project of that certain project ng developer, and you tend to focus on that. There's a difference. Eh? Kasi sa, if you're under a developer, the documentation will be ano na, um, passed on to the company or to the developer. Unlike if, like me, I'm into brokerage, I do everything from origination, from offering, finding the client up to the exit meaning exit and then after sale service for you. That's why I've been mentioning the intricacies of documentation. Natutunan ko siya because I'm into brokerage. So different yung project selling the own. Right. So I think, Lee, that's one takeaway lang, no? I just wanted to capture that really quick. For those who are watching us, documentation po is really, really important. Yes. So, sinagot po kayo ng kausap nyo na hindi na kailangan yan or pwede naman nating hindi na gawin yan. We just need to make sure po na malinaw sa mga nanonood. Kailangan po yun. Very, very important. Pag walang documentation, you might as well think na hindi mangyayari yan. So, it's a possible scam. Okay? Kasi marami pong mga nagaganyan, di ba? False advertisement na parang no paperwork. Hassle free. You cannot skip steps on the title processing, or even if not title, more, more real estate transaction, extrajudicial, or more, more court petitions in court, you cannot skip a step. You have to go through all those steps. Right, right. So thank you for that, Lee. So tell us, meron po bang difference in terms of the stress, you know, uh, as a real estate broker? Yes. Uh, yeah, if if we're going to touch on the ano yung parang, uh, um, disadvantage disadvantage of uh, let's say of being a freelance broker syempre, um sa totoong buhay lang if we're going to face the reality uh, when you are a freelance broker it, it usually comes with difficulties like number one unstable yung income you cannot guarantee that the commission you had the last time will be the same. Regular income is not guaranteed. So, and plus the fact that you have to find new clients by yourself. Then as I have said, responsible ka to every transaction 
Kasi wala ka namang office staff or unless you have your own ano talaga, big office. And most of the time, you work alone. Sometimes yeah. you cannot predict by your everyday schedule, everyday activities because um, sometimes you have to rush to your client, government agency, or to the site. So you need to be able to manage your time as well. As, um, right. Dapat firm ka rin. You, have, you have to instill self-discipline. You, you gotta put a lot of effort to push yourself into finishing your mm-hmm. tasks. Right. So I guess either way, no, may stress. It's just a question oh. of, it's a question of wala kang kota, pero sagot mo lahat. Na yes. Right? So either way you go, the stress is there. So for those who are watching who are interested actually, you know, to explore uh, becoming a real estate agent, maybe it's something for them to think about. Kasi either way, there is stress. It's a question of kung ano yung mas tolerable for you as a, an individual. Tama ba yung link? Well, yes. Ang, ang sa akin kasi, ang, ang bottom line there is, most especially what happened to us in recent years since 2020, yung, there's a dramatic change in our priorities. Eh? Yung like taking care of our physical and mental health has been the priority na eh? So for me, kung less stressful as much as possible and that you can manage your stress, hindi less stressful pala, if you can manage your stress more, Correct. the better. Yes. So, I think that's the bottom line for me, the wellness. Yes. And again, every individual have different stressors and different pain points. So being freelance versus being employed in a, a company yeah. will have its, or, its own stress. So let's not kid ourselves na it's a question lang nga to your point, Tully. How do you manage it? Kasi pag wala kang trabaho, mas lalong stressful. <laughs> yes, yes. Try All right. That. So, ang next question ko po is, um, meron bang pros and cons to being a freelance real estate broker? Yes, yes, of course naman. Uh, that's the one we've been talking about. Yung kung mm-hmm. advantages nga uh, uh, sa freelance broker ka, syempre, number one daw, yung independence nga. The mm-hmm. control, freedom from the boring routine. As you know, you have more flexible schedule. That means more bonding with family and friends, more vacations and travels if you are La Coachera. So no boss, as the people you work for are your clients, not your mm-hmm. employers. And ito namang mga clients mo, they can only state their requirements, but they do not direct your work. Mm-hmm. So again, the stress ko kung you don't have quota, syempre less pressure, and you get to choose your listings na easily also kasi ang real estate service endless ang opportunities niyan eh. he mm-hmm. have property management documentation so um if you're working as a freelance you can easily decide for yourself oh am, am i gonna take this contract or this job as so career and income wise growth is faster right But, yeah having said that na you get to achieve that certain level of wellness that we need. Yung, yung sinasabi ka na physical and mental. Mental, health. yes. Yeah. And I think in any industry right now, no, there is a, uh, a a heavy push. I think I read in the news recently that there is a, a push no, from a, from Congress to create mental well-being oh, programs no, at the LG level. Yes. It's about time. It's about yes. Time. So, which brings me to my next question. Because mental well-being, but you know, naman when you're dealing with clients, there are different kinds of clients, right, Lee? Oh, so, oh. <laughs> so, of course, you might you've already encountered difficult clients. So, how do you handle difficult clients? You know, we are in a people-oriented business, so we are expected to meet different people from all walks of life, including difficult ones. In principle, um, the best thing to do is to be responsive rather than to be reactive or be emotional about it. But in, in problematic situations, um, ito, I, I always approach and handle things um, professionally and legally, meaning um, the basics. I check on the basic rules. Ano ba yung legit? Or ano ba yung tamang gawin? 
because it is possible that the client is being difficult because there really is a problem. So um, I find out first, where is it coming from? Kasi nga, baka may pinaghuhugutan. What can be the proper remedies? So what I do, I consult lawyers or people with authority, you know, engineer, government officers, on solutions and options to assist my clients. But if it seems that nothing is wrong and that the client is just being offensive, which happened to me once, I simply walked away, walked out of the bed without saying a word. I do not tolerate disrespect. My commission is not a free pass to ill manners. Correct. And I think for everyone who's watching, I think it applies to everybody, right? There is a price tag for respect and integrity. So no matter how bad the situation gets, right? It can be very stressful, no? Kasi malalaking amounts of pinag-uusap. Oh. It, it does not ever justify being disrespectful. Yes. No, on both sides. On both sides. Both sides, yes. Yes, yes. So thank you for that, Lino. Uh, I have a couple more questions na lang and we'll wrap this up. But being a real estate broker takes a lot of patience, right? Because different clients will always want something, you know. How, how do you manage, let's say for instance, right? After working with a client for some time, looking for a specific area, and then you've gone through all that, and then they decide to go with somebody else. How do you handle rejection? Uh, well, um. I find out first the reason for such a decision. If curable, then I declare it as a happy problem. I encourage client that if it is workable, then I approach it by the rules. Again, by the rules, basics, consult persons with authority. Then I present the solution to the client na pwede naman pong gawin din ito. If the reason otherwise is a personal preference. I accept it wholeheartedly. Rejections are normal for me. It is a part of my work. So I learned how to live with it. Pero ever since, it honestly doesn't affect me that much. Because I guess because I look at rejections in a different perspective, you know, meaning something like, um, Oh, sayang naman. But everything happens for a reason and there's a much bigger break for me soon. Because, you know, um, my personal slogan is matching people and property. Purchasing a house or an investment property is like a, ma a marriage or a destiny. I don't want to be a part of something na, uh, that is not destined to be or meant to be together, or to simply put, I don't want a client buying this house I am selling when he is half-hearted naman on it. So if given the chance, Chabra, I would still keep on looking for properties for this buyer to like, but if not, well, I can only wish that he could put on a good word for me and refer me as a real estate broker. That's a great... Uh attitude towards it no Lee. I think I think for those who are listening no and if ever they are interested actually to actually be in real estate what you just shared is really nice no in terms of hindi lang nice eh? it makes the work really meaningful no when you say that it's a mission na mm -hmm. it's not about just selling someone because at the end of it if they're to your point no half-hearted or mm -hmm. hindi naman nila na achieve yung talagang ultimate goal nila you know, as as a like as a professional, right? But um, you're not satisfied also, because it's not just all about commissions. You're right. Yes. You're right. And that's a good way of looking it. So, which brings me to my last question: How would you advise the younger or yung hindi pa nagsa start? No, because actually for real estate, wala pong young. Anybody can come in here for as long as you get license. Oh, so, oh, what would be your recommendation, Lee? Oh, for the aspiring real estate yes. brokers, especially the young ones, it, it, it is very general. No? It applies to everything. Na, when you love what you do, everything follows, right? The discipline, number one, the passion, the drive, and the enthusiasm. 
that will all automatically flow. Number two, um, I'm requesting the yun nga, aspiring real estate workers to be an advocate of the Real Estate Service Act. The law is already provided for the real estate service practitioners and it is strictly implemented. Real estate brokers are um, regarded as professionals. So if it is nice if you can already be a part of this community who upholds the integrity of the profession as early as now. Now for the students naman of Bachelor of Science in Real Estate Management, this four-year degree course is the prerequisite or the requirement for you to take the board licensure exam for real estate brokers. So for the students or the soon-to-be students, there is more to life than grades. Getting a professional license is a humbling experience. It's nice to be competitive, but sometimes when we focus on the end result, um, we miss enjoying the fun and the journey and getting that result. And um, do not take BSRAM in real asset management because because you just want to sell real asset properties. I'm taking a breath because I just want to sell real asset properties. I hope uh, that you will enroll in real asset management because um, you want to learn and mold your future career in real estate so that you will be perceived as a professional real estate practitioner. Finally, be active in organizations and real estate events. Um, take a priority or find time to learn the latest trends and updates in the industry. Right. So maraming salamat for that advice, Lino. So yes, before we, we close, um, how can the audience or those that are on the Buildy platform reach out to you for inquiries or anything? How will they reach out to you? I'm uh, I'm in Facebook, but I'm all my line is always open. This is my major um, communication line. My cell phone number it's zero nine one seven five three one four three four three. From there, I can give you my Facebook link and my uh, email address. Right, and then we'll post that also on Buildy and in Pro Stock, so that for those who are watching, if you need to get in touch with Lee for any questions or advice you can reach to her there. So with that, Lee, maraming salamat for your time today. We truly appreciate having you on board so that, you know, I think for those who are watching, they'll be very more, they'll be hopefully, right? They will be more discerning, you know, when they select people that will help them with their projects. And again, for real estate, because this is really serious amounts we're talking about, please get to a professional. If it is not Ms. Lee Ramirez, somebody else, but make sure the licenses that are required will be presented po sa inyong mga nanonood. Because okay. ProStock po is all about educating everyone in the country on what professionals do or what can professionals do for Filipinos. So with that, Lee, any parting words for our audience? Um, I, most welcome, Ms. Nathalie, and um, all the best to you, Ms. Nathalie, and to Bill uh, please keep up the good work. Thank you so much, Lee. Maraming salamat. Thank Everyone, you. thank you. Talk to you again next week.